Hi everyone, today we will start the most awaited course from Framing Hub, that's blockchain. Let's get started. Blockchain course is divided into four major modules. Module 1 covers basics of blockchain. The first topic under module 1, the basics of blockchain is distributed system. What is blockchain? Elements of blockchain, how blockchain works, tiers of blockchain, benefits and limitations of blockchain. In module 2, we'll cover types of blockchain, distributed ledgers and technologies involved in different types of blockchain. What is public blockchain? What is a private blockchain? Consensus and the cap theorem. In module 3, We'll talk about what is Bitcoin, transaction in Bitcoins, transaction data structure, mining and system and genesis block. This module 3 acts as a core of the blockchain technologies. In module 4, we'll talk about Bitcoin network and payments. Bitcoin network and Bitcoin wallets, Bitcoin payment, Bitcoin investment and how to sell Bitcoins. The last topic that we're gonna cover is BIT, that's Bitcoin Improvement Proposals. Let's start the first topic of Module 1, which is Distributed System. A distributed system is a group of independent nodes connected with one another in a very coordinated manner in order to achieve a common result. So let's first talk about the common results. The common results can be sharing of the data, sharing of files, sharing of some messages. So this common result can be anything or even the common results you can say sharing of money or transferring of money from one uh, sender to the receiver. The nodes are programmable and it is asynchronous. Every node has its own memory and processors. They have shared state and can co operate concurrently. The nodes are connected with one another in order to offer a service, share data or simply store data. As I said in my topic here that what is the common result? So this common result can be anything, the nodes and this node when I'm saying node, this can be a computer machine, it can be a server, it can be a clustered computer or a cloud computing machine. All the nodes communicate with each other using messages. All the nodes in the distributed system are capable of sending and receiving messages to each other. So now let's talk about, this is a common example of how nodes interact and this N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, N5 till there can be any N number of nodes that we can connect and this N can be referred to as of any computer system. This can be a computer, this can be a server as well, uh, this can be a different server talking to each other or any cloud nodes that we can also refer to. Now let's talk about what way can we organize distributed systems. So this, this is an important topic that how we organize a distributed system. So generally there are we you know, we can organize a distributed system in two groups. First one is server-based and the other one is point-to-point -point network or you can say peer-to-peer -peer network. So this client-server architecture, an entity which communicates with the server in order to complete their task, they are usually connected to server on the internet. The biggest dis disadvantages of this architecture is that the whole system is dependent on one particular central point or you can say server. If the server goes down then the whole system stops. So if you see on this particular side of the diagram all the computer are talking to just one point server and if this particular system goes down then the whole system goes down. Now peer-to-peer -peer network. This architecture is like a network of interconnected computers in which they are able to share information and resources. 
it can easily be installed. So if I talk about the server-based communication, then installing a server is not so easy. It's a, it's a bit difficult task. But if I talk about the point peer-to-peer -peer, uh, network, then it's very easy to install and easy to configure as well. All the nodes in the network are capable of sharing a res resource and information with other nodes present in the network. Again, as I said, that this, this particular system are capable of sending message to each other, or you can say they are easy to communicate with the other node which is present within the network. Even if any one node goes down, it does not affect the whole system. So as I said, if one particular node on a computer goes down, then it doesn't impact the functionality of the other computers. Maintaining and building such architecture is comparatively cost efficient as compared to the server base. And in fact, the peer-to-peer -peer network plays a vital role in constituting a blockchain technology. So we'll talk about that how peer-to-peer -peer blockchain networks actually plays a how it plays a vital role in constituting a blockchain technology. So blockchain technology works on a principle of peer-to-peer -peer architecture which helps the technology to be more secure and efficient. Blockchain technology can be used in many industries but the highlighted one where it is most widely used is the cryptocurrency. And also there is a lot of development going on in this industry. It's just not because when, when we say blockchain then people say cryptocurrency you know, but there is a lot to it. It's just not that blockchain means cryptocurrency there are also different industry using the blockchain technology onto their day-to-day -day job a peer-to-peer -peer network is a central when it comes to doing a transaction with within a blockchain all the node can transact with each other in the blockchain now all the peer-to-peer -peer network are decentralized when i say decentralized it's not that the system is just relying on one particular authority or you can say one particular server so it's a decentralization and blockchain when when uh, anybody asks you that what is a blockchain just remember that it's a decentralized system so not one, one particular system is having a control of the other system and that is why blockchain is also known as decentralized application that's what i said this characteristics makes a blockchain more secure and hard to hack or break into. Later on in, in the topics, we'll talk about that how blockchain is secure and how it is hard to crack. So in the later uh, topic, we'll talk about what is blockchain and what are the different industries using blockchain technology in order to achieve their business goal. So if you have any questions or doubt, you can drop a question, you know, your question onto the comment section. And for this particular course material, you can refer to the link mentioned in the description of the video.